So welcome to the welcome to our talk of uh, on C Group and enterprise user. I am Kamlesh, and my co-presenter Tom. We both work at Oracle's Linux development team, and uh, we also extensively contribute to the Libc Group project. So Tom is also. Uh, Uh, Tom is also maintainer of uh, Lipsy Group as well as Lips, uh, Lipsipcom projects. So moving on to the next slide, uh, this is our regular uh, safe safe harbor uh, safe harbor slide. I just you know leave it there for you know, a few seconds for you to read it. Moving on, uh, let's dive into the timelines of a C group support in Linux kernel, along with the year in which uh, V2 version of the controllers were merged. If you see, uh, V3.16 was the first release which had uh, support for V2 controllers, uh, but it, it was uh, a little expensive because the user had to pass a special mount option when uh, when they were mounting the hierarchy, which I mentioned in the uh, bottom of the slide. So if you see, uh, moving a little forward with 415, it was labeled stable uh, because you don't need it anymore, you know, uh, the special mount flag anymore. But uh, the, the same controllers, the memory IO and the pitch controller were the only controllers uh, available in 45 also. Uh, fast, fast forwarding like four years or something, uh, Phi 2 had more or less uh, all the uh, needed controllers or i would say the parity you know good parity among uh, good parity of controllers which are available with 512 and i would consider that to be a stable release uh, uh, from a container or an uh, uh, enterprise uh, class uh, point of view uh, the, the major one was like if i if i'm right it would be like 415 which added the uh, device controller and with 52 we had the freezer support so uh, moving on to the next slide Uh, you would see that this this slide is nothing but it's an uh, compass timeline from the previous uh, slide with the major milestone along with the uh, no, enterprise classes picking up the C group V2 support. Uh, so the the regular question which gets asked is why is why are the distributions too slow uh, while you know picking up the C group support uh, like any other uh, feature? Uh, but I would I would say that you know. Uh, uh, it was the right thing to do because uh, with 513 is where more or less parity of uh, C group controllers were available, and you know uh, the moment uh, freezer support was in, it just got picked in by the distro as such. And from on, from now on, I would just uh, say distribution. When I say distributions, distros, I mean the enterprise class distros. So understand that every distro or you know every major release is going to be get supported for 10 years or all which would mean that the distros would be very uh, picky in choosing the stable kernel which they want to you know use for the major release uh, majorly because of you know making sure that they don't break the KB, kabi you know often and uh, they have to consider the bug fixing which comes from upstream as well as uh, the security fixes and other features which get introduced in the kernel uh, throughout the lifetime of like say 10 years and i would say that you know uh, by 513 or something, uh, uh, V2 had spent a lot of time building next door in the you know, community distro, so most of the issues were ironed out. Now, if you see, uh, when, I'm, when, I, when I speak about enterprise customers here, I'm referring to enterprises which are you know, developing application based on you know, C groups as such. They do have, uh, they, they do are too picky on you know, choosing the distros where they would start or the feature they would start supporting the group E2 uh, for the similar reasons as like you know uh, long times long term application support which which would even run in like year, many years like say example 10 years or something like that and the combinations of releases and the distros they need to certify so that's me we will discuss about it you know in more in the upcoming slide so moving on to the next slide uh more timelines you know we just love timelines so in the, in this we are going to focus more on the Lipsy Group releases. Uh, for people who don't know Lipsy Group, uh, it was the earliest library which was available for applications to programmatically uh, work on C Group interfaces, as well as it provided CLI tools which you could you know use to manipulate. For example, uh, with C Group V1, if you want to create a particular C Group, 
across all the controller hierarchy you have you know you can just use uh, cg create and pass the controller names and it just gets created in one command line so if you read it from left to right you would see that you know uh, uh, Lipsy group was released with c group v1 support even before the distro picked it up and down the line uh, c group v2 support came after you know uh, the C, uh, C group V2 support was picked up with the distro. And after that, we had interesting, we have interesting features like abstraction layer and system D support, which we would speak in the upcoming slides. Uh, can you please go to the next slide? So, uh, before we dive into, you know, uh, when and where you can use Lipsy group, uh, I would say that Lipsy group currently supports uh, V1, V2, and the hybrid mode where you can have, where you can, have v1 controllers and v2 controllers mounted at the same time that means that you can use the same function call or the same tools to just work on all of these setup modes without needing to worry about you know passing uh, any flags or you know special things which is needed uh, so this is just a very minimal uh, very minimalistic list of places where lipsy group can help applications and users uh, as we spoke, programmatically, you can manage the system, these scope. This is very important for applications. Uh, those who want to manage their own substrate, as shown in the uh, figure in the uh, right side, the topmost figure, where you can see that in the one major thing is like placing of tasks. You know, uh, system D would just uh, take care of placing the task in the right C group, which you don't want to happen. And uh, another thing would, another interesting thing would be like, you can just use the known interfaces to, uh, uh, read or write the controller settings, and you don't need to learn new syntaxes. And all the tools which are available now are uh, well aware of uh, handling both uh, system D versus the delegated and the non-delegated interfaces. And uh, the biggest strength has been it can you know, allow you to manage and create complex hierarchies in terms of uh, multi-level nested groups or managing hundreds of hierarchy which are mounted. And uh, it, it supports uh, threaded controllers, which means that you know it understands threaded mode completely, and it understands system D transcendent mode. Uh, it allows you to uh, read and write every controller settings. Uh, I guess system D doesn't allow you uh, CPU set, and we have introduced uh, Python bindings, which would mean that you can just say import libc group and just start scripting, you know, uh, uh, working with C group interface as such. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, this is just an you know uh, slide on uh, what was the contribution and you know, how it went. So in 2008 we started up with V1 support, uh, and I guess it was the, then back then it was the only library uh, with, uh, which was available for you know programmatically uh, you know, working with C groups as such, and it was uh, available in most of the distros. I guess when C group V2 was announced. Uh, the distros had some other plan and that was a dip in the development phase. In 2019, Oracle picked it up and ever since we have been maintaining uh, the library and we have contributed to features like uh, support for C group V2 hybrid mode and uh, other cool features like abstraction layer. Uh, abstraction layer would allow, you know, uh, allow you to move from V2, uh, C group V1 systems to C group V2 system uh, without like any effort and, uh, and system D again in Python binding. And I would, I would take this opportunity to thank everyone who, you know, uh, contributed to Lipsy group and would ask all the distro maintainers or the package maintainers to pick up the latest available Lipsy group. Let's move to the next slide. So uh, let's take an example of and how the applications or enterprise application would generally, you know, support a C group as such. So if you see, let's take an application uh, A uh, which is uh, in nature, it's just a CPU intensive workload. And uh, and it's again going to get supported for a long time. So let's say application A picks up uh, support for V1 when it's available in the distro. And uh, it starts using uh, C groups for, you know, uh, grouping the task and, you know, uh, allocating the share, CPU shares based on, you know, the nature of those tasks. Mm -hmm. And once uh, the same CPU controller is available in V2 also, then it, it starts you know, supporting V1 and V2 interfaces. And similarly, when it's available for V2 only, when the distros pick up V2 only, then it just starts, you know, drops the support for V1. This would be a very idle case, but that's not how the real world works. So uh, can you please go to the next slide? In 
real life, if you see an application A could have just done a release X and uh, C group V1 just got uh, uh, release X and it would just support for 10 years or all. And uh, C group V1 would could have just got picked up in the distros and uh, the application A would start supporting C group V1, which would mean that it needs to support two different modes. One is no C group and C group V1. Uh, probably it would be including a lot of if tests. And just before the end of life of uh, the version X, there would be another release, say uh, X plus one, which gets released here. It needs to support C group V1 and again, uh, non C group, uh, non C group uh, option. And again, for in, in its own lifetime, like it's uh, uh, in its own line, uh, lifetime, it would see that, you know, there's support for C group uh, hybrid mode as well as C group V2. And again, it needs to support both of them. And again, we would have another release which would just get done before, you know, uh, end of life of uh, X1 as such. And similarly, you would just, you know, use the C group hybrid mode, uh, C group uh, unified mode, and drop the support for non. So if you see the common pattern across all this thing, it's like the major burden is not about the adoption of C group as such, but maintaining the wo different versions of C group within an application. Uh, think of a controller which is available in V2 and which might not be really available in V2 in the same form. Or uh, think of the uh, control interfaces which changes with every kernel. So that would mean an application needs to be like support, supporting different versions of distros, different kernel of different kernel versions with different uh, controller options available. And and we are not even considering the, the other Uber features or other non C group related features uh, the application need to support. Uh, let's know. Oh, and the major thing is we don't know when the new new feature get uh, uh, when the application starts using the new feature. We don't know how the customers are going to set up the C groups. You know, it's just an assumption which might break as well. Uh, moving on to the next slide, we let's remove all this uh, extra details and just let's let's focus on what you know. Uh, Let's make it too simple, right? So there is an enterprise class distro which would pick up kernel features and there will be services and packages which work around C groups which will get updated. That would mean the application needs to support it. And uh, the question which people ask is why are uh, the distros not you know, uh, picking up the latest, the greatest available is like, it takes few years for stabilizing the application over the years and no distro is going to just throw it away as such when it's working and reliable. So, uh, Tom, I'll just pass it over to you to speak the other technical challenges as well as you know, the solutions which we provide from the group. Thanks. Sure. Thank, thanks, Kamalash. Um, so, th thanks for laying the background there. Um, Oracle is obviously well known for databases, clouds. Um, in fact, I just heard today Oracle has something like 10,000 products, but this, this isn't a talk about Oracle products. It's more of a focus on enterprise users and how the challenges they're facing as they try to migrate to the latest and greatest. Um, on top of that, Oracle obviously also maintains a distro. So we have thousands and thousands of users all across the planet running whatever applications are running. Um, some are brand new and some are written well following the latest and greatest guidelines, but some have been around for years or even decades and predate C groups, predate system D. Um, and so they have a lot of legacy background. Um, and so how do we help them move forward and migrate onto these new features? Um, before I dive into these use cases, again, like Kamal said, I'd like to thank everybody for the hard work. This definitely is not uh, an indictment against C groups. This isn't an indictment against the latest and greatest. In fact, we love it. It's just sometimes difficult for us to help our customers navigate there. So um, I've got four examples in front of us that um, we've seen come up over the last few years with our uh, distro, our enterprise customers. Uh, and these would be, uh, spoiler alert, these would be great possible discussion points um, at the end. So the first one, I'll stop, start in the top left. So say you're an application and you've been running on C group V1 this whole time. Um, your goal is to, to dedicate 70, 80% of the CPU to your app, whatever it may be. Um, and so one way that, we've seen a user go about it is they've said, hey, let's set up uh, exclusive CPU sets. Um, on V1, the root C group ignores that. On V2, it behaves perfectly, which is awesome. And it and it does obey it. So if you set up a, a child, my or oracle.slice, and you gave an exclusive CPU set, 
through it a little bit. Um, so that's one snag we've seen, um, which obviously you can case statement, you can if that, but it's been suboptimal for users. Uh, moving down to the bottom left then. Uh, so UEK7, which is our latest released kernel, uh, that's based on 5.15 upstream kernel. Um, in that particular release, a parent C group, again, so this would be on a C group B2 system as well. Uh, a parent C group, so say you made a C group, oracle.slice, it is required to keep a list, at least one CPU available to itself, even if it creates exclusive CPU sets below it. So if you made two child C groups, database.scope and cloud.scope, they wouldn't be able to use the entire CPU set that's been allocated to them. Uh, in other words, well, again, one would have to be dedicated to the parent, even though the parent and have no processes in it due to the no inner process node rule. This has obviously been fixed on 6.6 .6 and probably was fixed somewhere in between, I don't know where. Um, so our newest Oracle release, when we have a new kernel come out, it'll have it. But this will be something that our internal users or, or and our distro users will have to, to live with for the next, we've got eight years left of this. So yet another potential. Yeah. <laughs> I saw, I saw the hand pump there, Christian. Um, so yes, this will be a recurring theme. So I'd love to hear thoughts on this one as well. Uh, moving to the top right. Um, so depending upon which kernel you're running, depending upon how your system D is configured, and depending upon what your applications are doing, processes will show up in the root C group. But a process in the root C group has roughly the same amount of CPU.shares as system.slice or machine.slice. And we have seen users get into the case where either due to poor configuration or bad luck or straight up nefarious applications. Um, an example of that would be the application expects real time. And depending upon the distro and its various release, um, some of them didn't, it's hard to get real time enabled in a child C group due to the uh, config RT group sched config setting. They just move their process to the root. If these processes start hogging CPU, suddenly you get things getting starved. Um, so that's been, that's been another challenge for some of our users. Uh, finally, moving to the bottom right then, the single writer rule. Um, and this kind of relates then to some of the previous ones. Uh, so in, in a nutshell, the single writer rule says that a single entity C, or system D owns the hierarchy, which is a wonderfully simplifying requirement. I love it. But again, many of these products predate it. And so they expect the ability to write up and down the C group hierarchy. Um, so the official mechanism to work around that is a delegated C group, again, company.slice slash database.scope or whatever. But going back to like the bottom left example, then suddenly that means depending on which um, kernel you're running on, you might have wasted CPUs because you've had to reserve them for a parent C group that can't have processes within it. Um, I think this is a good rule. I'm glad it was adopted. But again, the people that existed prior to this are having, are struggling with it. So life's not all bleak for us. Um, we have come up with some solutions over the last few years that have helped several cases, but I, I brought up those CPU ones because I think those are discussion points we'd like to talk about. So here are some we've, we've come up with in the past. And I know, so for example, top left, uh, we talked about this at previous LPCs. Uh, we now have an abstraction layer. It's released in libc group. So if a customer wants to talk CPU.shares, they can, we'll convert it to CPU.wait or whatever setting, which is readily mappable, we can do that for them. Um, there are some more challenging settings that we don't map, but at this point, no enterprise user has requested them. So if that is a request upstream, just let us know and we can definitely get them in there. Uh, in addition to, so the abstraction layer is available, CLI, uh, C, direct C APIs, Python APIs, and as highlighted in the top right, uh, also via CG config. Um, CG config is kind of an interesting thing. So that again is a feature where given a configuration file, like the example shown there, a user can have C groups be created at time or at basically when CG configs runs. So you could, you know, obviously re restart and make it happen then. Um, this previously would conflict with system D owning the entire hierarchy. 
Uh, but now oh, I notice we have a little typo here. We don't have different. Anyway, um, we can create um, a C group hierarchy that obeys the single writer rule. So in other words, we'll have it delegated properly. Uh, so this is this has allowed many of our customers to migrate from V1 to V2 fairly seamlessly and obeying a reasonable amount of rules. Um, not perfectly so, but also not hampering their development either. Um, and so finally, then bottom left, as I was hinting at, we have all we added system D delegation support again via CLI, C code, Python, and CG config. So a user can, with a single uh, CLI command or basically two lines of C code, create a delegated C group. Um, of course, they can use DBus too if they want, but as you all know, that's rather complex. So those are some of the solutions we have. Um, but I guess that what, what we're looking for is ways we can continue. And I heard, and I heard you, Christian, before the talk started, another secret V2 talk. Um, based on Kamalesh's timeline, um, we probably are going to be having these discussions, at least within enterprise world, for another five to eight years uh, as we continue to migrate customers and apps and our distro from V1 to V2. So questions for you, like, are there upcoming features that are going to continue to break our enterprise users? So again, like the, in, the no inner process, no process and inner node rule, I love, but it's broken them in the past. The single writer rule, I love, but it's broken them. Um, otherwise, other new features that'll also help them. And I guess then questions too, we'd have are what other mechanisms and tools do we have to help these these users migrate, um, especially when they have to run on old distros that don't have the latest, greatest system D or latest, greatest kernel features. What 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 options do they have available to them? So thank you. Um, open for questions here. Yeah, I was just gonna, gonna make a comment on the uh, the system D version stuff. I don't remember if you if you touched on it earlier, but the um, we are definitely in an interesting spot now where for a while, um, especially with containers, if someone wanted uh, to run like an older distro, and I think CentOS 7 was kind of the most common for that, uh, the solution tended to be, well, you're booting a system that's on Cgroup 2 right now. If you try to run that distro, it's going to blow up because system D from CentOS 7 is not super aware of Cgroup 2. Um, so you just reboot the whole system, set uh, unified hierarchy to zero. Yay, you've got Cgroup 1 on the host, things work. Um, now the point is that we've got the opposite issue that's coming up now with distros, um, where I just, it's the opposite, what's going on? Okay, so it's the slide. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's true, we've got a camera here, and we've got this one there. Okay, there we go. Um, oh, yeah, I, right. So, yeah, I was going to do this also one there. But, okay, um, yeah, so that's a bit of an issue now with the later system having removed the group one support. Uh, Okay, oh, well, some distros are shipping some snapshots at this point because we've got images that don't boot anymore. Um, so when that happens, you're effectively like, well, you have to choose now. Do you want this host to be able to run old stuff or to run new stuff? If you want both on the same machine, you can't. Um, so it's, it's starting to happen. It's not surprising. I mean, we've had those chats with Leonard for a while and like, he's, he wanted to get rid of the C group one support like multiple years ago. So it's just starting to happen now, and it's something to keep in mind because you're not going to be necessarily able to mix and match containers on those systems. The scheduled for removal next year, I think. Um, and I'm supposed to ask, uh, library support for transient units, it's something that could be interesting in having in libsystemd itself uh, and whether you'd be up for contributing this. Uh, we, would, we would definitely be interested in helping with that, yes. Again, the, the, the snag for us is by maintaining more features in something like libc group, it's easier to get these changes back into our 515 kernel, our older kernels than that. When we do system D, obviously it being, I'm not gonna use the word monolithic, but much larger, it's much more challenging to get latest and greatest system D features backward into older kernels. So, but yes, we are definitely interested in participating there. I have, I have one question. So <clears throat> the libc group, are you supporting c group v2 isolated partitions? If you I, set isolated. Kamalesh, I don't recall right offhand to you. Okay. Uh, 
uh, so it's going to allow you to do anything and everything which you just do it within the command line right if you're going to say you're going to pass on uh, any controller setting for c group uh, cpu set as such you can just do it here it's it, we're not providing any policies here we're just helping you programmatically just do it that's it so is there if anything you write a particular cpu set and yeah, yeah instead it. of root you write isolated and yeah, oh sure. yeah yeah you can you can, can, can do those yeah. Uh, we don't give any the, policies the, or restrictions as such. So you, so I can just, it's, so you don't, I can write any string to the. Yes. Control. I mean, right. uh, which, which is legal. I mean, we, we don't check it. I mean, if the kernel is going yeah. to throw you error, we just written, we are going to return the error to you. The, the, sorry, if anybody else has a question. Sure. So the other question, system D, V2 support, right? The, you have root, root C group. Currently, you know, you can send a dbus message to system D and root C group can, you know, change CPU set. The same thing with isolated. There's no way to say system D, you know, CPU set isolate these CPUs instead of just you know, regular isolate, regular CPU set. So is it system D is planning to do it or it's waiting for contribution from someone? I, I can't speak for system D lately, but I recall a discussion from years back and they had no plans to support CPU sets period. I don't know if their oh. mindset has changed since then, but um, they had a design they, methodology they, that didn't match it. So uh, they do support CPU sets. They didn't uh, support it in C group V1 because the okay. controller was considered broken, but uh, with C group V2, they do CPU sets like full oh, nice. blown CPU set support. Oh, awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Cause again, as you can tell, we're still living in enterprise world and we're still V1. So that's good to know. Thank you. Um, for C group V2, there are some um, old C group V1 feature that are not in C group V2. Is there anyone in particular that are needed but are still not in C group V2 yet? So, what do you think? So, uh, C any group V1 features, that... are you asking for C group one yeah. V1 features that aren't in V2? Mm -hmm. But not in yeah, V2. There's, there's, yeah, there's many. So, like one of them that uh, I can think of a while back that bit uh, an enterprise customer of ours. Customer of ours they had decided that SCED domain relax level or some whatever it's named, I don't remember its exact name. So CPU set SCED relax domain level or something was really mm -hmm. helping them get better performance. There is no equivalent feature in V2 and I sincerely hope there never is. Um, so that would be one like in Libc group, we'll let you set it if you're on a V1 system and on a V2 system, depending upon how you've asked us to configure it, we'll either throw an error or we'll silently ignore it depending on what your request is. Okay. Um, I think is it can be implemented in in V two in some way I guess, um, but the the relax, the scheduled relax domain level only apply to to apply to the whole scheduling domain. So you so you need to apply it on in the in terms of C group V two is on the on the partition level. So you have a one partition is one schedule scheduling domain. So you have you can set um relax um scale relax domain level for the whole um partition, I guess. Um so it, it would, can be implemented. That that would be interesting. But, uh, we, would, we 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 have a couple of customers that would be I won't say I love carrying that idea along, but they would definitely be interested in it. So yeah, if you have ideas, we'd gladly listen in on that. That'd be that's one of the sticking points we've had in the past. Okay, yeah, yeah, I certainly believe that it can be implemented in SQL V2 um, as an extension to the partition interface. Awesome, yeah, thank you. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, there's def definitely still some gaps. I think the most recent uh, we kind of had to deal with on, on our side was, was it net prior or net CLS? Like one of those was kind of weird. You can do it some other ways. I think we ended up doing it uh, through NFT. So using the um, NFT balls features to effectively get the same result and that worked. Uh, I guess one question for the LibC group stuff is when you're supporting both well, transitioning from V1 to V2, uh, did you look at uh, effectively converting devi the devices policies over to BPF automatically so that someone could just have that work? We've effectively done that in, in LibLXC where someone can set the normal 
text version of a um, devices C group allow list, and that just turns into the new magic eBPF thing that you need to load. Oh, nice. Yeah. I didn't realize. <laughs> the question says it does a paint, right? <laughs> I was say we have finite bandwidth of, of uh, engineering engineering hours, but that sounds very appealing. I I will admit I will go look at your LXC implementation. I'm intrigued by that. Yeah, so you can probably look at, uh, at the code in libLXC because that's yeah, that's basically what we had where like people were doing like LXC dot C group dot devices that allow or whatever, and you can just replace that. The C group two version looks identical to in as far as the config file is concerned, but turns into a BPF instead. Oh, awesome. I don't know if you want to add that is, something. That's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just rehashing what we uh, what we said years and years ago. So it's at some point it becomes a I'm becoming a I don't know radio, whatever you <laughs> want to call it. But uh, um, yeah, the original idea had been that we sort of have a mock um, C group file system that internally translates uh, C group v1 write request to C group v2 and possibly the other way around. But I think there would be a massive amount of work and it doesn't really um yeah, it's, it doesn't really work nicely. Like for um, for the for the devices controller, it kind of works because we have a separate abstraction layer. So for a container engine that, for example, con configures these are the device settings that I want to apply, um, then you can parse them and then you can transparently uh, translate them in, into an eBPF program. But it obviously doesn't work for direct consumers. So meaning, if you have some sort of program in a container that expects to write a, I don't know, a devices program uh, through this C group file system directly through the devices controller um, that simply doesn't work because it, it doesn't exist anymore, right? There is no, there is no devices controller. That's a BPF program. So there is no file to write to. Um, so th these applications you can't really salvage. Gotcha. That makes sense. Any 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 yep. direct consumers? What I'm trying to say is of of uh, the C group file system and expecting a, a a specific version. That's just yeah. I think we're past the point where we can meaningfully uh, support this. Agreed. Yeah. It would we, it would be interesting to you. Is this like something that you have problems with? Is this something that you do actually support? We don't currently. I have yet to run into a major problem with devices like that. But I think that would be. It's just a matter of time when somebody finally comes to us with that. So yes, we would be interested in a similar solution to what you've done. And I think we could do a very similar C group FS kind of thing like you did, um, as long as they're interacting with yeah. C group and not directly with the CF, the CSFS. If they're using the C group library, they get a, like a CG write or something for devices that allow for this value, and they just need to turn down. Yeah, so yeah. it's the same data as what we do in the XC, where like, if you do have the VPF hardware, sure. you just yeah, my point is you can't have like like for example, we would be a prime example when we would be running inside somebody would be using a distro with a Lexi binary from I don't know what, and we assume that there is C group v1 in oh, there. Yeah. We would be writing trying to write directly to the C group file system, and that just wouldn't work because yeah. we wouldn't yeah. find any. And we were considering gotcha. doing stuff in like with Lexi FS with like a fuse file system that pretends to be v1 and does v2, but that's just that oh, just never really got anywhere, and I've. I think it's kind of too late for that at this point. The concept of it right now. Yeah. All right. Do we have any any other questions? Yeah, this one like that. Thank you. Um, in one of your slides, you showed uh, an example of hccgconfig.conf configuring yes. a database.slice. Is that an yes. implementation on top of systemd subtraction, or is it? Uh, the CG libcg group, you are rooting some tools to it, apply those yeah. settings into system D slice. We, we are ma we are making direct dbus calls so that it's properly delegated. Okay. And system D recognizes it as a, a delegated.